and thanks so much for joining us today. I'm Carol Jenkins. The program is Black America. Today, it is our pleasure to have here in the studio two terrific talents. Damien Sneed, a composer and performer, on tour with his great new show, We Shall Overcome. And Janae Bridges, described as one of the most powerful mezzo-sopranos arriving on the scene, already singing major roles with the Metropolitan Opera and the Washington National Opera. Let's uh, start with a piece called Heaven. And, my goodness, that actually was heaven. The whole studio is in rapture here. <laughs> Janae and Damien, thank you so much for joining us. Just sensational. And you were telling me that that heaven comes from, we, I've heard it so much, but I didn't know its origin. It's, it's from Duke Ellington. Duke Ellington's Sacred Concerts. Sacred Concert, right? And when did you first encounter that music, the, the Duke Ellington? Well, I've known of this song for a while, but Damien and I really just, um, recently started collaborating on, on this specific song. So it's currently in our repertoire. Um, yes, yeah. we did it for the funeral service and the memorial service at the Metropolitan Opera for my mentor from my hometown, Augusta, Georgia, the late, great, phenomenal artist, Jesse Norman. Right, I was there and it mm. was absolutely fantastic. I, the Metropolitan Opera, that place was packed you know, with so many devotees of, of mm. Jessie's. Mm. I, I, I knew her not, not well, but, you know, spent time with her. She's a phenomenal talent. Among the many talents you've worked with, and now you and Janae are going to sparkle all over the, the, the country. Um, I, I want to start with you because in reading your bio, first of all, well, he is a bit older than you are, Janae, so, you know. His Just a bio, few months. Only a, a few, few months. months. <laughs> a few days. <laughs> is about 20 or 30 pages of teeny tiny type of all the things that you've done uh, in your musical career, starting when you were three years old. So tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about that. And at, by the time you were eight, you were leading the senior choir at your church. Yes, I started playing piano by watching television and banging on a toy piano. And I actually asked my mother, uh, could I take lessons? So I started lessons at four and a half. And I remember the pastor coming to my church. I got scared. I'm like, the pastor is supposed to be in the pulpit at the church, not here in the home. <laughs> and uh, they asked me about playing piano. And I started playing off and on at the church. But then at the age of eight years old, I was the music director for the senior choir. And the I learned director, so much. Right. Yes, for, but for the <laughs> senior choir. Can you believe it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so, we're, I mean, obviously a natural you know, talent, but how did that work, eight years old, telling the senior choir what to <laughs> do? Well, they gave me some sheet music. I remember one of the particular selections and some of the songs I had to learn by ear. I started off reading music. And uh, it was really interesting because they really mentored me. And it gave me a strong proclivity to be drawn uh, to older uh, people in my community 
in our community okay. and to understand how important it is to stand on the shoulders of our ancestors and mm -hmm. those before us. Yes. Which leads me right to our, the first question we usually ask our guests is to place themselves in black America, the influences, and how do you, how do, you do that, Janae? Mm. Well, like Damien said, I mean, we are standing on the shoulders of, of our beautiful, strong ancestors. And for me, I, I ask myself often, why me? What, what am I here to do? And I've realized that, that my calling is to use my gift, first of all, but in that, to, to draw people to this art form that has um, historically been uh, kind of taken away from us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah, I, I feel I, in, in my blackness, I am just like everybody else. We can do all things and everything, and, and I am living proof of that. So you, you were saying that you grew up in Tacoma, Washington, yes. up on the Upper West uh, Coast mm -hmm. over there. I mean, when did you first know that you had this, uh, this voice? Uh, and were there others? You said your dad was a musician? Yes, well, my what? dad has been in the Allen AME Church, oh. Men's, of, Men's of Thunder, Sons of Thunder, I'm sorry. Sons of yes, Thunder? Yes, it's an all men's choir um, right. in Tacoma, Washington. And he's been in that choir for about 35 years. So I grew up seeing my dad in the choir loft, singing his heart out. And um, for me, though, I, I started playing piano when I was five. So music was always in my blood. Sure. Singing, however, classical singing came much later when I was uh, about a junior in high school. And I had a teacher recognize that I kind of had a natural gift because I was in the, the choir. Right. And so she suggested that I start studying privately. And I, I studied privately and I absolutely fell in love with this new art form. I had no idea about it. I, I, I really had no um, connection to classical voice. I played classical piano, but for some reason I just never, you know, put the two the together. Voice yeah. To it. Right, so. Right. Uh, once I was kind of introduced to it, I absolutely... And that happened in high school, yes. right? So now I was on your website and I saw this great video of you with a basketball. <laughs> yes. You played basketball. You could have gotten a, co a college scholarship. Yes. I, in fact, I did get college, scholars, <laughs> get college scholarships and I turned them down um, because I found this new love, this new passion in singing. And I really had very little training, but... Uh, I knew that it was something that I had to at least try. So I decided to audition for conservatories all around the country and I ended up getting into Manhattan School of Music oh, wow. where right. I met Damien Sneed. Where we met each other. Um, over 10 years ago. Wow. Exactly, her right. first year at Manhattan School of Music and it was right. my first year in graduate school. Yes, there. I was an undergraduate. And now I'm on the faculty there, yes. Right, right, oh, you teach. Amazing. There. It's so an amazing small world. It all worked out. Basketball's loss is the Metropolitan Opera's gain. You and know, I do I still know. play for fun, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, yes, just not competitive. Oh my gosh, we can't take care of that voice now. You know? <laughs> yes. So, so Damien, uh, this, uh, this three-year-old, eight-year-old, oh my gosh, you know, I don't know what you call it, prodigy, uh, spends a lifetime in music working with some of the the best, Aretha Franklin, and I mean, I, the list is just in, incredible. And now you have this show that you are taking on the road called We Shall Overcome. Talk to us a little bit about, about that. Well, I grew up in Augusta, Georgia, so I grew up watching uh, television specials on the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., mm -hmm. visiting his home, visiting the historic Ebenezer Baptist Church. So I was always drawn to uh, his life work. Uh, so it's a great opportunity uh, having mentors like Jesse Norman from Augusta and also Wynton Marsalis. They really uh, let me know that it's important to continue to have uh, a purpose as an artist, not just making music. It's not about getting awards or fame or fortune, but it's about using my art form to give voice to those who don't have a voice. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what's being done with this exciting tour, We Shall Overcome. It deals with American songs across the American spectrum of uh, indigenous musical art forms in America, classical, mm -hmm. jazz, gospel, blues, uh, spirituals, uh, R&B, uh, folk music, uh, popular music, and it really focuses on the themes of protest and reconciliation. Uh, people in black America, our ancestors have always used their tools, whatever tools and resources they have, even though it may seem small to others, 
to make sure that they projected a legacy mm. that others could come behind. And that's what this music does because music is a universal language and it's amazing. The most important part of the tour for me is not on stage. It's afterwards when people come up crying. Uh. People saying I never held the hand of someone who's a different race than me because we have everyone hold hands and sing We Should Overcome. Seeing people say you healed me today. This helped me. Mm -hmm. This made me think differently about uh, race in America. And it's mm. not just about racial disparity and social injustices, but for example, I was adopted and I had to overcome rejection. And so life always comes with all types of vicissitudes and things that come up against us, but we can get through them and that's what this tour is about. That's what music does. That's what I do as an artist to help heal people. Great, and we're mm. going to hear at the end of the show something from, from your traveling uh, show. I hope it's going to come back to New York and stay here. Is that a possibility, Broadway? Possibly in the future. There, there's some other projects coming up down the pipeline. Okay. As well. <laughs> All right. Great, great, great. So, Janae, uh, the Metropolitan Opera, of course, I mean, uh, the National in, in, in D.C. at Kennedy. These are incredible. So few <laughs> singers, period, you know, at, the, at actually at Jesse Norman's uh, memorial at the Metropolitan. Mm -hmm. Uh, I sat next to Renee Fleming, and I was like, wow. it's Renee, and I had my granddaughter, and I wow. said, do you, know, do you know who that oh, wow. is? Yes. <laughs> and she says, yeah, kind of, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so few people get to sing uh, there, and when, well, tell us about your experience, how that happened. Wow, well, to be honest, I, I, I'm, I'm still on a high from that experience. Um, I went to Manhattan School of Music, as, as we said, and I just remember going to the Met every chance that I could, collecting my little right. pennies and coins so that I could sit in the nosebleed section. I know, that's just a to lot be of coins to collect. The right. world's <laughs> most, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Right. Um, but just to be in, in the world's most acclaimed and esteemed opera house. Um, and so the fact that I have sung on that stage now, it really is not only a dream come true, but it, it's a huge accomplishment. And I like to say that it's not, it's really not just for me. And I did not get here on my own. I have a very strong um, village. Um, and my, my family is so supportive and I'm, I'm just ever so grateful. But for me, it's, again, it's more about bringing that possibility mm -hmm. to other children and black girls and black boys. Uh, and, and also, um, making it a normal and a regular thing to see my face and someone who looks like me right, on that stage. It actually should not be a big deal. Right. It is a big deal. It is. Um, and I, I fully <laughs> understand that and I, um, and I appreciate it. But for me, one of the goals is to make it such a regular um, occurrence that, you know, I, it's not Janae Bridges, the black opera singer. I am fully appreciative and thankful for this body that I am in, and I wouldn't change it for the world. I know you guys um, have such gifts. I mean, that uh, yeah, is I'm, just, I'm grateful. But both of you are, are you really using them to the, to the you. full, Thank your you. full yes. ability. Yes. That, is, that is so amazing. Now, you have uh, an opera that is about to debut. Houston, yes, super talk excited. to us about that. It's called Marion Song. The librettist is Deborah D. E. E. P. Mouton. Uh, she's currently Houston's poet laureate, African-American female, black American, and it's about the life of Marian Anderson. And it starts off at Howard University, HU, that's where I went to school. <laughs> right, uh, right. But it's really amazing, and uh, the world premiere will be March 5th and 6th, and it'll be coming around uh, the country and around the world in the future. But I'm really excited to lift up uh, the name and the legacy of such a phenomenal right. uh, person who had to persevere much mm. And uh, I'll just bring forth one theme in the opera. And you probably understand this as a black American, as a person of color living in America, and you understand it with our history. The theme in the opera that I really just want to bring forth here, giving a little foretaste, two steps forward, one step back. Uh, uh, that says so much. That says so much, especially these days, right? No. Especially That's, these days. So she was the first Metropolitan Opera singer. I guess we were defining it that she was the first one who was actually hired, had a contract. Yes. And that was... 65 years ago this, this month. Right. January 7th, 1955. Yes. January 7th. They're just celebrating that. And now I was watching last night in anticipation of, of talking to you all, her Lincoln Memorial performance 
75,000 people. For those who don't know, she was supposed to sing at Constitution Hall, oh. and because she was black, they refused her yes, performance yes. there. Eleanor Roosevelt, who was then the president's wife, and arranged yes. for her to sing at the Lincoln Memorial. Just an extraordinary. Exactly. And so that's the two steps forward and the one step back. I exactly. Mean, that that so that now you are going to be singing, talking about two steps forward. You're going to be <laughs> singing, Carmen. Talk to us about. I mean, that's one of my favorites. Oh, Carmen. Course. So yes. Carmen as, is absolutely fabulous. It's one of my favorite roles, and um, I'm singing that in Amsterdam coming right. up actually. Right. But before that, I'm singing Samson and Delilah. I'm singing the role of Delilah at Washington National Opera at the Kennedy Center. Right, right. And so you know, it's really just full circle. Right. She. We just celebrated. Um, Marian Anderson's debut at the Met, and for me, this is, it, it, it really hits home because I feel, I literally feel, feel her. I feel her. I feel Jesse Norman. I feel Leontine Price, Simon Estes. I'm, I'm guided by them. And so for me to um, enter into Washington, D.C. in this iconic role, in which she also sang, yes. is, is, very special, and um, in fact, there is an exhibit right now at the Smithsonian, um, oh. a Marian Anderson exhibit, and so somehow I, I would love to be involved in that because I am because she was, right. you know. Um, so I'm happy to to. What a lovely way of, of putting of putting it. Mm. And you said that you were, we were talking before, and you said you'd like to sing at the Lincoln Memorial. Yeah, you know, I just I think it would be interesting. To, to, to sing at the Lincoln Memorial, I now, thank God, I can go into the Kennedy Center, not through the back door, um, but I think just to keep everyone abreast of what we have been through and come from um, is very important. So I think I, I, I definitely want well, to I play with this idea. Well, I hope you wait 20 years to do Until it, the though, centennial, the yeah, centennial. Yeah, maybe I'll, yeah. No, <laughs> it would be great to do it before that. You You're know? right, yeah, but I'm that, gonna work that, on that. Now, I, I, on your website, uh, the description of you of uh, classical, jazz, sanctified, sounds soul. like soul. Sanctified soul. soul. <laughs> yes. Right? yes. And, which speaks to the breadth of your uh, capacity in all kinds mm. of realms of music. Uh, uh, people usually specialize, you know. I'm going to do classical. I'm going to do jazz. I'm going to do, uh, but that's not you. You do everything. Uh, yeah, some people now are calling me a polymath or an amphibian. Uh, I like to think of myself as just being original. Uh, mentors like Wynton Marsalis, who won Classical Artist of the Year mm. and Jazz Artist of the Year at the Grammy Awards mm. for two consecutive years, that's an example uh, before me. Uh, Jesse Norman, who could sing anything that she wanted to sing. Uh, it's interesting because people like to place people in, in a box. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's important to understand history and it's important to understand what has been before us, but more so, I think we should allow young people through education to be who they are and to develop the talents that are uh, within themselves. And for me, growing up, my father would play all types of records. I mean, from Eugene Ormandy to Holland Oates, Michael Jackson. I had to watch Jesse Norman on television, Leontine Price, James wow. Brown, Bobby Blue Bland. You know, uh, so I always grew up with all these musical styles. I didn't know it was incorrect until I became even more and more uh, mm. uh, moving up the ladder of education. Uh, you know, even in high school, I played in the wind ensemble, clarinet, I played in the orchestra. You go to schools today and they just don't have those, yeah. that capacity. I'm, uh, how, you're an, uh, an educator. How do you expose children to this music if they really, uh, they can't afford to go to the opera house, they can't mm. afford to go to Broadway, they can't, you know, they're just so, they're shut out of everything because of the money. There are a lot of community groups. She talked about the village, mm -hmm. uh, fraternity sororities who have talent competitions still, like AKA, Delta, uh, Omega Psi Phi, Kappa, Kappa Alpha Psi. The, I participate in those, the NAACP AXO competition. There are still people in our village, yes. in our community, uh, that provide those type of opportunities, but you're right. They're not there uh, in the same way that they were before. And so that's why I have like the Damien Sneed Foundation, the Performing Arts Institute that we uh, have annually at the Jesse Norman School of the Arts. Mm -hmm. Janae has initiatives that she's starting I and do. we're doing an active job to try to really give back now yes. and not wait until after we've retired. Exactly, but now. But we have to give back now. And I, wh whichever opera house that I sing at or concert hall, I make it a point to put in my contract and say, 
I want to do outreach, which I, I have sure. a funny feeling about that word, but right. outreach. I want to engage these children and invite them to my concert is, for free. That is fantastic. They have to be there. Now, there you see, that's that's a huge So I'm, you know, leveraging the situation. <laughs> right, right. Both of you are doing wonderful. Well, we always uh, close our program by asking our guests to comment uh, on the power of the strength of black America to finish that statement of what you think the power, the strength of black America is. I think the power, the strength of black America is in unity and educating us about our past, being honest about our present, and being optimistic about our future. Hmm. Hmm. Ashe. <laughs> <laughs> and that, and you want anything you want to add to that? I mean, he. he I mean, I would definitely second, third, and fourth, fourth that. <laughs> um, but yeah, also for me, giving back to our community, mm -hmm. I think it's so very important. It is so important. And for me, that, that is one of my missions. I, I cannot have this gift and keep it to myself. I just, it's impossible. So in, in whatever way, we all have our own gifts. Mm. We must give back. And so your, your, your perfect world is that black girls and boys will look at you and say, oh, I can do that, of course. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and the la sorry, I just wanted to add this. The last gig that I did, um, I sang a Messiah with the New Jersey Symphony Orchestra and Roderick Cox, an African-American, conducted. Um, and there were a few black people in the choir and the women came up to me, two of them, and said, thank you so much for wearing braids. Uh, right. That means so much to us because we feel sometimes uncomfortable with our hair and our skin. Mm -hmm. And I just looked at them and I said, you are perfect. There is nothing that you should ever change. Forget Instagram, forget social media, forget Facebook and what you see on TV. You are a queen. Yeah. What a wonderful, and what do you say? You know, that's very interesting because uh, I remember my Carnegie Hall debut and someone said, you definitely will not be wearing a mohawk, will you? I said, I will absolutely wear my hair in a natural style uh, because I love it being an African-American man, a black American, male in America today, many times we are judged before we can open our mouth and speak. So I love the fact that in my skin and in my casing, mm -hmm. uh, people may think differently about what is going to come out of my mouth or my voice, but once they hear the art, once they hear the gift, they may have to reconsider that you can't judge a book by its cover. You can't judge someone just based on the color of their skin or how they wear their hair. Wow. <laughs> well, that is... Thank you both so much. You were both so terrific. I am so glad that I got to hear you at a friend's living room <laughs> yes. and said, yes. come, come on the show. Right. You guys are fabulous. Thank you thank for you having so much, us. Carol. Gosh. Really, thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you for what you do. Yes, oh, absolutely. Oh, you guys, and, and as we go out, we're going to listen to Damien uh, play something from uh, We Shall Overcome. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you the next time.